Hey everyone, it is Virginia McLean here. Um, back to read some more Victoria Marmot. Sorry that it has been a while since the last time I posted an episode, um, but it's been kind of a busy few days for me. Um, I took the weekend off and then Monday and Tuesday were intense with doing a bunch of other work. So the good news is I have been hard at work writing some new books, um, or a new book, and, uh, and that's exciting. Um, and I'm also working on a big virtual uh, fantasy convention um, that I'm hoping to uh, be able to tell you guys more about in a few days. But um, yeah, uh, in the meantime, I'm finally back to record a bunch of chapters, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to record a few today. Um, I also am gonna re-record the last two chapters because I. Um, was wearing this mic last time, but I was also wearing a vest and, that had a zipper on it, and this mic was rubbing up against the zipper the entire time and creating a really annoying noise that I didn't notice until I played them back a day after I'd posted them. So really sorry about that for everyone who um, had to go through listening to those recordings. Um, I'm After I record my new chapters, if I have time, I'm going to go back and immediately record, re-record um, chapters 7 and 8 so that you don't have to live with that awful recording. Uh, it looks like not too many people have viewed them yet, so that's helpful. Um, yeah, but anyway, I'll fix those and then all should be well. But if you are one of the few people who have already watched them, I'm really sorry about that. And uh, yeah, I'll be better about checking that in the future. Okay, so... Um, when last we left our hero, she had just head-butted an intruder, <laughs> uh, which was Eddie, and, um, but then the, the cops had come in and she was just sort of slumping into unconsciousness, uh, right as she recognized, um, one of the cops who happened to be, um, Gwen. So, um... That is where we're starting off with Victoria Marmot and the Meddling Goddess, Chapter 9. I'd wanted to ask Gwen a number of questions, but of course, she was gone as soon as I came to. It took a while for the rest of the cops and EMTs to leave, but luckily they were willing to take my statement in my own kitchen instead of making me go to the local precinct. I'd had a much harder time convincing the EMTs not to drag me to the hospital, but I downplayed the headbutt to Eddick's brick-like skull and played up shock as the reason for my fainting. It wasn't that I'd wanted to ignore a concussion, it was just that I couldn't handle the thought of spending the night alone in the hospital. The cops <clears throat> asked who they could call for me, but the only family I had nearby was my great-uncle Algernon, who was 85 and probably didn't need the hassle of being woken up by the cops at 2 a.m. So I said no one. When everyone had filed out, I heaved a sigh of relief and turned my head to my bedroom. I desperately needed to get some sleep, but just as I turned towards the staircase, I heard a scratching noise on my front door. What the? I wandered to the door and looked at the peephole. I couldn't see anything, but the scratching redoubled, coupled with a light whining sound. I reached for the lock, then thought better of it. I turned around, went to the nearest closet, grabbed my field hockey stick, and then went to turn the lock on the, on the door. Field hockey stick brandished threateningly all the while. My open door revealed none other than the wolf who had been following me home earlier. What are you doing here? It was a sign of how exhausted I was that I was talking to the wolf instead of panicking about having a large predator on my doorstep. <clears throat> it whined again and nudged its head towards the door as though asking to come in. No, dude, I need to sleep. Whatever wolfy business you think you have with me is gonna have to wait. The whining increased, and the wolf stared at me seriously. Ugh, dude, I just need to get some sleep. I didn't finish my thoughts on getting a full eight hours of rest, because at that moment, both the wolf and I turned to look up the stairs, where we just heard a ridiculously ominous bump from my bedroom door. Bedroom floor. Okay, that is the end of chapter nine. It's super short, so um, I'm recording a lot of chapters today to make up for it. A couple of them are short, a couple of them are more uh, normal length. Um, but I'm gonna 
keep things organized. So I'm going to end this video here and start the next chapter in a separate video just so that it makes it easy for people to follow along. Okay, I hope everybody's staying reasonably well and off we go. See you for chapter 10.